this is Andrew from Freedom Machine Tool and Diversified Machine Systems here at our world headquarters in Colorado Springs. Today we're going to be making the bookshelf you see here using Fusion 360 and post-processing that out and cutting it on a 4x8 FMT. We're going to include the Fusion file as well as the IGES file in the description below. So if you do want to download this and make this on your own machine, um, feel free to do so. Um, the neat thing about this is it'll take a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood and get that at any of your local hardware store. It does not require any screws. Uh, if you want within Fusion you can also change the design on top. We happen to put a DMS uh, but feel free to put your own company logo and the toolpath should be fairly uh, simple to follow along with. If you have any questions let us know. do a quick video today using Fusion 360 to look at how we can actually take a model from the Fusion 360 gallery and turn this into something like this which is a nested part that we can actually create on um, a router fairly easily and repeatably. We're going to do a, a three-part series on this particular part so we'll go through modeling, we'll then go through nesting the part and then we'll finally go into tool pathing and possibly even a fourth part will be actually cutting the part out downstairs. Um, I have cut this exact thing out and everything fits together just fine. I'll include all of the links in the video so if you want to download this and cut this out for yourself you're more than welcome to and if you do have any questions you know, feel free to let me know. Uh, A Townsend at DMS CNC routers I'll put that in the description as well in case that comes up but uh, without further ado let's get started. So one of the neat things about Fusion 360 is that you can essentially do all of your modeling and then create your toolpaths in the same software. Why that's really nice is that you can import a customer's DXF file, possibly any kind of drawing they have, and then very quickly be able to make edits in the model and then toolpath within the same program. Um, the other benefit of Fusion 360 is you can actually use the same software and, and um, designs at home as well as at work because it's all cloud-based. So I can pick this up at home where I left off and pick it right back up the next day at work. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty neat software. So what we've got here is this is something that I have just downloaded from the Fusion 360 gallery. If you didn't know, there's hundreds and thousands of parts you can download on the Fusion 360 gallery that people have made. Now, always check first before downloading a part to, to make and produce, but it's a really good starting point to make tweaks and, and similar. So the first thing we want to do is actually get all of these individual bodies away from each other. And notice how we want to actually change the body. We don't want to actually move this piece. See how I've just selected the face? That was something that took me a little bit of learning to get used to. So if we right click and move, if we just move this, look what happens. It, it wants to make it larger, smaller, what have you. So what we actually want to do is select the body and actually move the body. Now what we can do is we can change our view so we're looking at this head on and what we want to figure out very quickly is how thick this is. I'm guessing it's a uh, three-quarter inch but let's double check. We can press I which will bring up our measuring screen or we could press the inspect here and that would do the same thing. So let's just select these two points here and here. 0.725 All right, we go back to our home view. It's just something I uh, have gotten used to doing. So what we want to do is we want to actually hollow these out because watch, if we just move this, so now I'm going to right click and move copy. If we just move this away, notice how now we're losing our holes there to put this together. So we don't want to do that yet. So a trip you can do that, that's 
fairly simple and universal is we're actually going to select each of these pieces here and we'll press E which will extrude. So we know that it's 0.725 but we want to take out a little bit more than that because we don't want to quite get rid of that um, particular line there. So let's actually say negative 0.73. Do this here, negative 0.73. Same thing, negative 0.73. Now we can move our right copy somewhere else. Let's just move it over here. Let's just get it out of the way. Good, that's done. So by taking off a little bit more, we now still have our pieces here we can take. So all we'll do now is extrude this positive, 0.73, same thing. And there we go. Now we're right back to where we started. So this is looking good. Let's do this same piece here. Actually, while we're on it, let's just swivel this around. Let's do this other side. Select this, our left side, right click, move and copy. Let's just move this out. And then we'll do the same thing. Seven, three. All right, very good. So we've now gotten our two sides out of the way. So we can do this bottom part here, but I want to rotate and do this back. We're just going to basically do the same thing we're doing for everything. It's negative 0.73. And now let's move our back. Right click, move. Let's just do this. Okay, and then we'll have to come back in on our pieces here, get a little bit of a better angle. And then again. All right, so now we've got our model into our different steps. We still got our little bit of a plate here. Let's do the same thing, negative 0.73. We can now move this bottom. Let's just move it over there. And the last bit we need to do, 0.73. And again, okay. So now what we've effectively done is we've essentially just created a component for each of these. We could do some other little things, possibly uh, with the tops here, so to let this uh, top piece sit on there. But for now, what we'll do is we'll plan on nailing that in, or maybe even just using um, some kind of a fastener screw, similar. So. That will be the final for this particular video. It should be fairly short and sweet. Um, again, as a reminder, some things to think about as you are using Fusion 360 to do this is you don't want to select the actual face. Select the whole body when you want to move it. You want to actually extrude more than the thickness of your material, which will leave you um, something to select, so to say, to then extrude back out. This is mostly uh, prevalent when you're doing uh, joints like this, but 
it's something to keep in mind. It can, it can mess you up a little bit. So uh, thank you so much for watching this video on Fusion 360. Again, our part two, which will be in the link below, we're actually gonna take these parts and nest these on a four by eight uh, sheet or a sketch, if you will, and I'll show you how to do that. So again, my name is Andrew from Freedom Machine Tool and Diversified Machine Systems in Colorado Springs. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email. That'll be um, in the description as well. And thank you so much for watching.